So today's video is going to be a follow-up to a previous video. A couple of days ago, I made a video called YouTube is Broken. If you haven't watched that video, I'd really suggest you watch it now because if you haven't, you probably won't understand what's going on. But to everyone else, again, this is a more serious theme video and I felt like I had to address something. So as a lot of you may have known, I've had this guy called Riceman on YouTube go on my channel and claim a fair few videos where I used his content. In one of my videos, I shown a five second clip from one of his videos in a 10 minute video and he still claimed the entire video for himself. Now I already made a video on the situation saying how there's not really much that can be done, how he was extorting other YouTubers such as Leafy is here, but now Riceman has actually made a response video to my video. Now originally I really didn't know how to go about this because I realized that if I used his video within my video, he'd claim it for himself. So unfortunately I can't actually show you the video in question, but I'll have to directly rip quotes from it that he said. Now the first point Riceman makes is that I stole his content and tried to make money off it. And honestly, this is a really broken argument because he's implying that I've like taken his video, directly re-uploaded it and not transformed it in any kind of way, just a direct re-upload of his video. Now if that were the case and I did directly re-upload his video and change nothing of it whatsoever, then yeah, totally. Riceman's in the right and he has every right to claim or strike my video, but that isn't the case at all. I'm pretty sure the majority of you know what fair use is at this point. I'm probably just going to throw a little explanation of it up on screen. But basically to summarize fair use, as long as the video is transformative and doesn't really use any more than is needed to convey your message, then it falls under fair use. Now obviously fair use can be a really grey area because there isn't a certain cut off. Like for example, if you use more than 50% of the video, it doesn't qualify as fair use. There is no cut off limit for fair use. So it can be quite difficult to to understand when a video qualifies for fair use or when it doesn't. But with me, I believe that my videos fall under fair use because I only use what is needed to convey my message in the videos and plus there's a bunch of editing and commentary and a bunch of other stuff. It is in no way a direct re-upload of someone else's video. Now another point I have to make is the fact that he said I stole his content, implying that I needed some form of permission to use it in the first place. But with fair use, you don't need permission. I don't need to ask the original content creator if I can use said content. Now again, to repeat myself, if I was just going to directly re-upload someone else's content, then yes, that is breaching fair use and copyright and they could definitely strike me for that but but like i've already said my videos are transformative in nature so they do qualify under fair use so there was no need to ask for your permission to use this content i mean let's be fair if fair use didn't exist and you literally had to ask everyone for permission for things how broken would that be like for example if a critic wanted to review a movie and then they had to go and ask the producers of the movie like oh yeah uh could we please review your movie but we didn't really enjoy it do you think they're gonna say yes do you think they'll let them review a movie and they know that they're gonna pan it this is why fair use exists so people can express their freedom of speech without having to compromise in any kind of way riceman then goes on to say imagine if you stole someone else's music now i do just have to throw my two cents into that little comment that riceman made i think taking a video editing it reshaping it and then adding my own commentary on top of it is slightly different than re-uploading the entire Skrillex album onto YouTube, unedited in any sort of way. Just saying. Just a little side note to the Skrillex thing. Someone has uploaded every single Skrillex song into one video, and they're all playing at the exact same time. It's honestly one of the most fucking terrifying things I've ever had to experience. Now, Riceman makes another point, and this one is really crucial. This is probably the reason why I've made this follow-up video in the first place. Riceman says, I didn't even claim it, my network full screen claimed it for me. Now, if I look at the claimant for both of the claims on my channel, they are both indeed by full screen, but this isn't the case at all. My YouTube channel is managed, not an affiliate. A managed channel makes you immune to being automatically detected by third party content matches. So the only way you can actually get a content ID match is if someone manually files out a report themselves, not YouTube's ID scanner. What I'm most sure has happened is Riceman contacted Fullscreen on his behalf to claim the videos because obviously it looks a lot better and a lot more professional when this huge monolith of a company claims your video instead of a small time YouTuber instead. I honestly don't believe why Fullscreen would claim these two videos and only these two videos. I'm pretty sure I've made videos on the past 
with other people who were also partnered with fullscreen. Why are those videos not claimed? Why is it only the videos that include Riceman's content? And the thing is, it's the same for me. With my current network, if I wanted to, if I felt like someone was infringing on my rights, I could contact them and say, can you claim this video on your behalf? So the claimant will be their network name, but still the revenue would be sent to me. I've noticed this happen quite a lot lately. A lot of YouTubers will actually contact their network and ask their network to claim the video on their behalf. So it saves them a lot of trouble because obviously the name of the network looks a lot better than an individual YouTuber. Riceman goes ahead and then says I'm some kind of attention seeker. Well again, that's pretty flawed, isn't it? Because like I said, I've tried to dispute this problem privately. I've tried to contact full screen multiple employees of full screen, I might add, in an attempt to get this dispute resolved. But because I've waited a few weeks and I've had no response whatsoever, I've been forced to make this video and I've been forced to come forward. There is no attention seeking involved. I don't want to make this video. I'd much rather bring my community an entertaining video, not some video talking about copyright for 10 minutes. I don't want to make this video, but I've been forced to. Another point Riceman makes is, all his channel is doing is taking other people's gameplay footage and videos. Make your own original content. Now firstly I have to address all the gameplay footage you see in the videos. That's all recorded by me. That's all me. I've never taken it from anyone else's channel. But him implying that my entire channel is based around ripping off and stealing other people's content is again just a really, really flawed argument. I'm repeating myself a bit here but like I said my work is transformative. It isn't a direct re-upload of anyone's content so essentially I'm not really ripping off anyone's content or stealing anyone's content. There are loads and loads loads of these reaction commentary channels, the same as me, that feature other people's videos within their own, and they give their thoughts and feelings on it and add some editing as well. It's a normal thing on YouTube. If you think this is illegal or it shouldn't be done, wouldn't YouTube have stamped out on it at this point? And also, you're asking me to make my own original content. Well, what is original on YouTube? If you're inspired by someone else or you use someone else's gameplay or someone else's footage to inspire you, does that mean that you're not making original content? Everyone is inspired by everyone. You find someone you like and you're inspired by them to make content similar to that. I'm pretty sure that a lot of Riceman's pranks have probably been inspired by bigger and more popular prank YouTube channels. So please don't ask me to make my own original content because that's a really broken and flawed argument. A final point Riceman makes is basically attacking my channel, saying my channel is all negative and all I do is basically attack and criticize other people. And again, this is an incredibly flawed argument. When I make a video, I make sure to never insult the individual. I'll mock what they're doing, for sure, I'm not going to deny that, but I never insult the individual. I don't go and mock their appearance or anything like that, because that's really fucking petty, and that isn't the kind of humor I'm going for, if you can even call that humor. And plus, when I've made a video on someone and it's gone too far, and the individual has been genuinely hurt because of it, I've made a video calling myself out and apologizing to them. Like for example, Gleesh Gaming, this kid that played Five Nights at Freddy's and Gmod, all these gameplay videos. He didn't like the video I made on him and then I called myself out and I apologized and I said, you know, please show this guy some love. Give him some subscribers, some likes, some support. And then he made a video saying thank you and giving me a shout out in return. So I'm not going to sit here and say that my channel promotes amazing positivity and makes YouTube a better place. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is my channel doesn't promote pure hate and negativity in the community. Trust me, it doesn't do that. And if I do slip up, I'm very quick to correct it. Also, in my original YouTube is Broken video, I'm pretty sure I reiterated multiple times to not get people to flame and attack your channel. I asked everyone to watch the video to not flame on your channel. Do not dislike it and do not leave hate comments. Of course, you'll always have the minority that go against it and they'll do it anyway. Of course you will. I can't stop that. But I'm doing the best that I can to root out any kind of circle jerking or witch hunting or anything like that. So please don't say that I'm not trying. What I love is that Riceman put time and effort into making this video against me and then at the end of it, he uses it as a plug to get people to buy his t-shirts. But anyways guys, that's pretty much the end of the video. I've really got nothing else to add without just repeating myself. This will be my last video on Riceman. There's nothing else that needs to be said. I personally don't have a problem with the guy. I don't hate him and I don't want any kind of hate campaign against him. 
I just think he's done something pretty stupid by claiming my videos unfairly. And this is the guy that made a hanging suicide prank to trick his mom into killing himself and then thinks he can stand on the soapbox and tell me that I'm a YouTuber that spreads negativity. I think that's just a little bit hypocritical to say the least. Anyway guys, thank you all so much for watching this video and hopefully normal memes will resume tomorrow. She disappeared across the board She keeps the sunset bright with her bandana right